we all know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the panel for Rogue One, a Star Wars story at Star Wars Celebration Europe. Please welcome to the celebration stage your host, Gwendolyn Christie. You all look amazing. This is, my, this is my first Star Wars celebration. And I get to be here, not just a fan, but on this stage for the first time while we introduce Rogue One, which is the first Star Wars standalone story. <laughs> Introducing president and producer, president of Lucasfilm, it's Kathy Kennedy. John Knoll. Okay, um, it's very exciting. How come London? You know, the amazing thing is, first of all, I want to say we could not be more thrilled, not only to be here today, but to be celebrating 40 years since A New Hope was made in London. We have Lucasfilm people here. We have crew from episode eight as well as Rogue One. So it Woo! is a genuine Star Wars celebration. A Star Wars story, you know, the thing is we have this amazing opportunity to be able to tell stories inside this incredible universe. And in the past, all the Star Wars movies have been made as either sequels, prequels, and now we can have these standalone movies that can explore different characters, different places, different planets, different, um, different experiences all the way around. And I think that that's something that all of us are extremely excited about. I, mean, I think I'm probably a lot like everybody in this audience in that I watched A New Hope every day growing up until that Betamax tape was completely worn out. And if you told me that one day I'd get to direct this film, I'd never have believed you. Like, I sort of think in some parallel world, I'm out there watching me on stage, very jealous, <laughs> saying, shut up, you idiot, I should be doing that. <laughs> and it's just been the most insane, most surreal experience you could ever have. Every day, just when you think you've had the craziest day in your life, the next day tops it. Was there a particularly memorable day for you? There's a million. Uh, on, I guess on one occasion, we were filming, I was with Felicity, and we're in the middle of a shot, and someone just nudged me and said, uh, pointed at this guy in the corner and said, do you want to meet Luke Skywalker? And I looked over and there was Mark Hamill. And I was like, you know when you go up to someone you're so much in awe of them? I don't know what I said to him. I was trying to be articulate and intelligent and I don't know what came out. And he was being really sweet and complimentary. And all I was thinking as he was talking to me, I was just looking in my peripheral vision going, please Lord, someone be taking a photograph of this. <laughs> like, no one's gonna believe that I met Luke Skywalker. And the problem with this film is you can't talk about it. You can't tell your friends, you can't tell your family anything. And all I wanted to do was go home and go, I met Luke Skywalker. And everyone's like, how was work? And you're like, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, actually, this, uh, this started about 13 years ago when we were shooting episode three in Sydney. And I heard that uh, George and Rick were developing this live action TV series. And I got thinking about uh, what sort of fun stories you might be able to tell uh, in that episodic format. And I started playing around with this idea, um, you know, drawn from the opening crawl of four of uh, the sort of Mission Impossible style spy mission to steal the Death Star plan. I think this particular movie is a perfect bridge into these new types of movies that we want to do because it is um, 
it, it's grounded in this piece of Star Wars history that everyone knows happened. And every Star Wars fan knows that the Death Star plans were stolen. And really, this is just our opportunity to expand on, um, you know, as John did, that, that one piece of information to really build out a completely new story, new characters, but yet it's happening in a familiar moment in, in time on the Star Wars timeline. And, um, and so I think it's a really great blend of, of old and new. And I think Gareth has done an amazing job of visualizing it in a way that feels really fresh. I would like to present some of the cast of Rogue One. Introducing Diego Luna, Riz Ahmed, Felicity Jones, essential to any good Star Wars film, is a good villain, a, a compelling, iconic villain. Star Wars fans, as director Krennic, Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah! I had the incredibly surreal experience of being made into a <laughs> Star Wars action figure. And today, I would like to welcome you to the club because... Goodness, goodness. Here is your Jin Erso action figure. Oh. oh my goodness. Thank you very, very much. I'm, I feel very privileged to have joined the Star Wars doll universe. This is actually the very first uh, toy being revealed from Rogue One. It's not as good as mine, but, uh, you know, it's great nonetheless. I, I don't know, she's got a pretty cool Han Solo gun belt. Woo! Oh, yeah, inspired by Han Solo. Uh, I feel there's one major difference between Jin Erso and other Star Wars heroes, uh, Rey and Luke. Um, and that main difference would be that, that Jin, she's not a character who's asking who am I and, and where have I come from? She, she very much, we know that about her. We know where she's come from. And that fact is, is what propels, propels the story and, and is the beginning of, of Jin's journey for, to find out what her reason is and, and her, her course. Um, hi, everyone. Just <laughs> I, I just want to say I've been waiting for this night for quite a long time. This is actually what got me into the project, the chance to share this energy. It's fantastic. So, yes, I play Cassian Andor, Captain Cassian Andor. And uh, he, he, he works for the Rebellion, for intelligence. And uh, the team starts being just the two of them, Jane and, and, and Cassian. But as the story continues, the team grows. 
And like any team, there's frictions, there's issues, and it's Cassian who has to keep them together. And one of the most important members of this team is a droid, an Imperial droid that is reprogrammed by the, by the Rebellion. And his name is K2SO. And he's probably the best friend Cassian has in, in the Rebellion, or the only one. Can you tell us a little bit about what it's like being a droid in a Star Wars film? Uh, Cassian reprogrammed him, and he did like a data wipe. And uh, when he reprogrammed him, he's not quite all there. Um, he speaks his mind and says things that, I don't know, can be unsettling and uh, just very honest. And it was great. It was great to play him. Uh, uh, there's amazing droids in the Star Wars universe. Bodhi is a pilot, and um, he works for the Empire, you know, to earn a living. And, like, you know, people work at big organizations, they don't agree with everything they do. Um, but you gotta... It's maybe... You don't have to get judgy. It's maybe... Please. Maybe questioning. Yeah, maybe, yeah, exactly. Maybe. He's kind of questioning things, and the, the planet that he is, the city that he is from, is actually an occupied planet, and uh, it's the actions of the Empire and the stuff that he's forced to be involved with over there that kind of makes him question his um, mm -hmm. his career counselor. Mm -hmm. And Bodhi's home is also where we meet Donnie and Jang's characters. <laughs> Bayes and Chirrut. Um, Gareth, can you tell us about Jeddah? Uh, yeah. Jeddah's, I guess the easiest way to explain it is obviously our film takes place in a time where there are allegedly no Jedi remaining. And, and, but people still believe in the Force and they still have that, that spirituality. And essentially Jeddah's like, I guess, like the mecca of Star Wars in that people go on pilgrimages and, and and the problem is right now is when the story begins is the, the it's an occupied territory by the Empire and we get sucked into a, a story that involves these wonderful people mm -hmm. to the side here. Mm. And two of the most important characters we meet in Jeddah are Chirrut and Baze. Um, they become crucial to the team and are played by Donnie Yen and Jiang Wen. <laughs> Johnny, what can you tell us about Chirrut? Uh, I just want to say hi, everybody. I'm Donnie. May the force be with all of you. I play a blind warrior uh, who lives in uh, the planet Jeddah. I can't see, but I can feel with my heart uh, and believe in the spiritual of the force. And uh, the, obviously, me and Jiang Wen is we are the baddest fighter from Jeddah. And uh, me and uh, Jan, his character base, we are very good friends. He and me was a partner, and he believed, of course, believed in force. But my character don't believe force at that time. We've learned a lot about your character's deeper connection in the Star Wars galaxy. How does he connect to this band of misfits? I think we can definitely call them misfits. Uh, good to see you all. Um, <laughs> Saw Guerrero is a, is a rebel fighter. He's been fighting for years against the Imperial occupation. Uh, he's a guerrilla fighter. He, is, um, he has been a uh, controlling a group of, of rebels that are out to the extreme. We're talking about the, that there's a, a series of different rebel groups that are coming together as an alliance, and all of these people are different parts of that. I'm, uh, I'm uh, leading my group, uh, which, which, which by any means necessary, he'll do what he needs to do in order to save the world. He was trained as a guerrilla fighter, and then he was trained um, by the Jedi as well. And I just want to say, I want to take a moment to say, like, none of this, none of this would be happening if it wasn't for George Lucas. The guy's a genius. We now have...
have confirmation that your character, Galen Erso, is Jin's father. What else can you tell us? That's it. <laughs> <coughs> no, I, honestly, it's, as you know, there's a lot of secrecy around the whole thing for good reasons. Uh, it, my character is a person of interest. A lot of things are revolving around him. Uh, so it would be like uh, kind of a big spoiler to say too much, but can I say that he's a, um, he's a scientist? And he at one point invented something so beautiful, so fantastic that it might change the universe. That's all I can say. And then I can say, I'm in a Star Wars film. I'm <laughs> that Krennic is a different kind of imperial villain. Right. <laughs> yes, he is. He's an Australian kind. <laughs> uh, we do villainy very well. He is smarter, I think, than most of, the, uh, the, most of his predecessors. Uh, he's more inventive. He's perhaps a little sexier than some of them. <laughs> Not quite as sexy as some of the others. Um, I don't think we can talk about Star Wars villains without bringing up one name in particular. We do have confirmation that Darth Vader is in Rogue One. Right, we finished filming in December and I got straight on a plane uh, to New York to do a voiceover recording with a gentleman called James Earl Jones. Woo! Now, I can't tell you what role he plays in the film, because <laughs> I don't want to give that away. I am really excited about this film. I think it looks amazing. And I cannot wait to get into the cinema and see it! Thank you very much to all of you fans who are in the room, all of you who are at home watching on the live feed. Thank you to our incredible filmmakers. Thank you to our amazing cast. And I think before we leave, let's all stand up and do a photo. Yeah, do you want to take a photo of the amazing cast? It was a real pinch me moment when we're all waiting nervously to go on stage and you can just hear people cheering and actually what hits you is the affection, the the warmth that was coming from the audience today for, for the for the franchise and for those characters and and actually it's just been such a such a wonderful experience. It really, really has. You can't help but be touched by those characters and and you, you have such empathy for them and, and you invest in them and I, I hope that in Rogue One we, we do the same. You feel the same when you watch it. It's called the opening crawl, exactly. So it's a group of unlikely heroes who band together to steal the plans to the Death Star. It was the first time that uh, people had seen some of the behind the scenes footage, which is absolutely incredibly shot and, and, and gave people, I think, an impression of how we've been working and the, and the authenticity that we've been wanting to get in the film and, and trying to make it feel as immersive as possible. And, and, and when you watch it, that you're really rooting for those characters and, and you want them to succeed, and, but you're there with them in those battles. That's what, that's what we hope people will feel. It's been an exciting day. I mean, I've been waiting for this quite a long time. Uh, 
it was the energy in that room was unbelievable you know i've never i've never done a project that people is expecting so much you know that feeling of like my god they really want this out you know and and i was sharing the feeling because i didn't see that piece till today you know so i was also very excited to watch it it's been a year of secrecy, you know, of not being able to talk, not even to, to your best friends or family. And uh, finally, we're allowed to talk and to, to start sharing this amazing journey we just went through. Uh, and hoping that the film does great, you know, and that, uh, that it pays back all that love that we re are receiving. We are a family now, you know, so it felt great to be all of us there. Normally, press is about you going there and talking and that's it. And, uh, and this time it was the team, the family, and those who were not on stage were down there, you know. I could see the DP, the producers. It was, it was an amazing celebration. It's very rare that you do something that matters so much for so many, you know, and, uh, and uh, that also connects me with my childhood, you know. It connects me with uh, the, my love for cinema, you know, it comes out of uh, A New Hope and, 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 uh, and my journey through, through the Star Wars world, you know. Uh, so, I don't know, I'm a fan too, <laughs> you know, and, and that doesn't happen often that you are as excited as, as those who are sitting down there. I was born in 79, so, and I was like the young cousin in, 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 in the gang of, you know, my family. So there was this thing of uh, wanting to belong, you know, to, to what my older cousins were talking about. And I jumped into the world of Star Wars to be part of that, you know. So I, 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 I felt connected to that kid I was, you know, today, and, uh, and I felt again that excitement. It's the most grounded film of Star Wars, I think. Uh, you know, this is the, the film about the people, you know. This is the film about rebels, uh, you know, doing something. And, 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 uh, and there's, like, just, there's the belief for the Force, but uh, we're not Jedis. We are, we are rebels and we're fighting for freedom. I've been to a lot of conventions before, a lot of cons before, but never one that was specific to um, one... <laughs> universe and that was so big I, I i mean it's it's a lot of star wars fans in one place and when you're the next movie coming out there's a, a lot of energy focused on you and your project so it's exciting it's infectious to have all that kind of uh excitement i mean we're excited uh, to see each other again you know it's been a little while um for us all to come back together uh and then also for us to see some of the movie as well, because we haven't seen um, the polished uh, part of this movie. We've seen, you know, what, what we were seeing on set, but there's so many pieces coming together. Uh, as you could see in the behind-the-scenes footage, uh, that seeing it put together with all of the elements is is nice. I was probably a little too young to go to see Star Wars in the movie theater, but I did. Um, and then Empire Strikes Back and, and, and Return of the Jedi. They were just the best movies. They were, you couldn't miss them. They were, as you wouldn't miss these, you know, they're, they're important. K2SO is a droid. He was a former security droid for the Empire, and he was reprogrammed by Cassian, who is um, Diego Luna's character, and Captain Andor. And... And so he is his droid, and he is devoted to Cassian. It's just very uh, rewarding as an actor and as a, as a as a fan, you know, seeing the result today on stage and seeing the response from all the fans. And I can't wait to see the movie. It's funny, you know, I'm looking at him as like I'm looking at a kid, you know, in a candy store every single day, you know, walking through all all of us, all the cast, you know, with. I mean, I remember Gareth, you know, uh, walking us through the scene and, and humming the, the beat. This is so funny looking at this director, this young man, that you can see that kind of child love and passion pouring out of his body 
it, it was quite uh, inspiring for me as an actor to see a director. You know, you get motivated by a director having that kind of passion. My eight years old son uh, is dressed in a uh, Kylo Ren uh, outfit, uh, full outfit with the lightsaber. So, you know, so they, they, they're just having a, having a ball. Being in front of such true die-hard Star Wars fans and unveiling Rogue One is, it's pretty special. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of love uh, for the entire series in that, in that room. It's pretty good. You don't get many better audiences than that. You walk out there and, and there's a moment where the, where the crowd's like going where and then they see and they sort of lock on and then people just stand and they just start cheering and then you walk along and there's people taking photographs in front of you and you just keep moving through them. You go up the stairs and people are, people are pretty excited. What you really know about in that room is the degree of love uh, for, the, for the films and the amount that they're connected to it. I love the fans mm -hmm. and I love the uh, people we work together. Yep, I like the uh, atmosphere. I'm lucky, I, I feel happy I'm a part of a Star Wars. You feel that energy when you're first walking in, because we were walking in and we could hear the audience and they were clapping and, and we're thinking, what's going on out there? What, what are they showing them? Why are they so, in, you know, it's, it's so intense. They've already, must be watching something, you know? Uh, and then when you go and you watch the audience uh, from backstage, you kind of get the feel. But until you walk out on the stage and you feel like these 4,000 some odd people uh, being so supportive, you know, I think you can't understand it until then. I think some of the behind the scenes stuff that they're showing was so intense and impassioned. You know, it's um, it's really exciting to see, actually, because uh, for myself when I watched it, I was like I was like caught by it. It's very emotional. It's very intense. It's the way it's shot, the way the way it's you know structured, the the music they use really really grabs you. I, th I think uh, the audience really was taken by it. This is my first exposure to um, a Star Wars celebration and. You know, I was told how supportive and enthusiastic the, the fans would be, but yeah, I can't tell you how, how much it means to all of us because we've been kind of holed away in studios and bunkers and in strange locations and cockpits of space shuttles kind of doing this thing almost with cabin fever and then to come out and then reconnect with the actual fans, the people who keep it alive is incredible. One of the things that's just special about the Star Wars movies is the suspense and the anticipation that accompanies it. You know, what new parts of this incredibly rich um, story world will be revealed. Um, and so we want to try and kind of, you know, tell people enough, but not tell them too much. Rogue One is a film that's inspired by just one of the lines in the opening crawl, the opening text of um, Episode 4, A New Hope. And um, it's about... Uh, group of rebels who get together to try and steal the plans to the Death Star. We've been kind of working really hard on this, trying to make this film as, as good as it can possibly be, you know, try and really just for the fans to try and make sure that they're happy with something um, that means so much to them. And so to kind of show little bits of the film here and see that reaction, it's a massive sigh of relief and it's also a massive injection of excitement for us all. What they showed today was a behind-the-scenes clip, a kind of sizzle reel of lots of uh, exciting sequences from the film, but shown from the perspective of a kind of making of. So, um, you know, it's the fans that really make Star Wars what it is. Um, and so I think everybody at Lucasfilm felt it was important to try and just let them into even the making of this, you know, because we don't make this alone. The fans make it too. They make it what it is. It's pretty surreal. If I wasn't on the stage, I'd be paying money to be in the crowd. It was like, I'm a massive Star Wars fan. It's where Star Wars was made. You know, the original trilogy was shot in London and, the, you know, Force Awakens was London. We're London. So it's the home as far as I'm concerned for Star Wars. If you tell me as a kid, like 40 years from now, like you're going to get to make movies, but like, wow, and then go, guess what movie? Star Wars. I just don't think I would have believed it. I would have been... It's all very surreal. Every day is surreal on Star Wars. 
It's extraordinary. I mean, to to think that 1976 is when you know everybody was here, and it's been 40 years, and we're back in London, and it just happens to be celebration, and we're making Road One, which happens to be leading in to New Hope. That was not planned. It's just it's ironic and wonderful at the same time. I've been really looking forward to to show some of the things that we're doing because. What we're trying to do with the Star Wars stories is to step outside of the sagas and the episode stories a bit, to take some risks with how we're cinema, cinematically approaching these movies, and and the fact that we're bringing all new characters into these stories. It is a bit of a risk when people are, have grown to expect certain things, but I think today when they saw what this looked and felt like, I think they were pretty excited. Gareth is a giant fan. He even took his girlfriend years ago, went into Tunisia where they shot, and and had blue milk. I mean, when he told me that, when I first met him, I said, you know, no one has told me a story like that. I think that alone is a reason to bring you into the fold. There's nothing like celebration. I think the fact that people care so much and they put so much of themselves into the things that they create, that's something that I tell everybody who doesn't know anything about celebration is you just can't believe what people actually make and the time and effort and care they put into things. It's really extraordinary. Everybody's bringing up the fact that we have Ray now and we have Gina Urso. But I think what's really wonderful is that these are female-empowered leads that we're putting in Star Wars, but they're also very, very different. And I think the other most important thing, probably, is that we're really emphasizing the need to diversify the cast and to really bring a sense of the world into these movies. It is Star Wars, after all, and we want it to reflect the audience that's going to these movies. It's the fans. I think going to events like this and seeing people get so excited and to try to meet that expectation with the things that we're creating, that's what I get the most excited about. It gives us an opportunity to really explore completely different stories with different characters, but inside the same universe. And we treat Star Wars now as almost like a kind of history that we're, we're drawing from. George left us this amazing mythology that, that we can now use as we create these new stories. So that's really exciting. Hey, did you like that video? Well, I've got some movie trivia for you. Did you know that, like Facebook, Star Wars was originally prefixed by the definite article, the? Hmm, much cleaner without it, don't you think? For this and more movie facts, click on more videos, or for more trailers, click on the playlist.